think today's meeting we are going to talk about uh, Git for version control, um, also known as uh, source control. And uh, we use it. I think everybody should be familiar with with uh, with Git, right? Uh, everyone is using Git, uh, GitLab. Uh, I asked the question to Kronal, so he was like, oh, I had no idea about Git, but I know about GitLab. So it's like, okay, everybody knows GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket, but it uses Git under the hood. So we'll just talk about a little bit of fundamentals and then a little bit of practical of uh, how Git works uh, under the hoods. Uh, so it will be easy, and then we'll go through uh, the Visual Studio code of uh, how probably, you know, you merge a code and how you how how to better how better use of git on vs code right uh so git git is used for version control as i said it's a, a software tool that helps software teams uh, manage changes to source code over time uh in codes uh, as development environments have accelerated, uh, version control systems help software teams work faster and smarter. Uh, the main reason we use version control, if a mistake is done by a developer, we can go back in time. So let's talk a little bit about the history. Uh, it was created by Linus uh, in 2005. Uh, in uh, Linux development community. Uh, it was initially designed to do version control on Linux kernel, but then it turns out to be like, you know, it's much effective in um, using source control. So yeah, uh, the basic goal of Git was to make it quicker and uh, a lot of branches work in parallel, fully distributed, uh, not a centralized system uh, able to handle large and large projects and you know uh, what he said was git is a cranky old man okay so today we're going to talk about what is git uh, a little bit about how to install Git. if someone just brushed through it if someone wants to know uh, how git works under the hood a little bit of fundamentals and a quick example of how merging code in vs in vs code so what is version control as we spoke as i just spoke about it like the version control is you know the code is basically the crown jewel of or an asset you know for a developer and you know if the code is lost then you know uh, it's it's a big it's a big problem so uh what we want is more control on our code. So version control software keeps a track of every modification to the code in a special kind of database. And as I mentioned earlier, that if a mistake is made, developers can turn back the clock and compare earlier version to the code to help fi fix mistakes and minimize the disruption. So these are a few links maybe if you need the PDF or the presentation, you know, you can go through the links, like how to install it. Uh, the good thing about Git is, uh, let me see if I can share the screen here. So if it has a Git help, it has its own doco, you know? So if you do a Git add or Git help, it gives a nice doco, doco of what you want to do you know, what it does, what are the flags, some examples in there. It's it's really helpful. So say if you want branch, you know, it gives you, it's, it's self-documented. It's very well documented. And, you know, if anyone has, or wants to play around with it and say like, oh, I'm feeling excited to use a new command and get, you can just go through you know, these tokens and you can just use it. You know, that's why it's like really helpful. So you can just do a git help and any any verb and that will work. So how does git work? Yes, it is complicated initially and if people don't know about it. So there are some basic uh, concepts that uh, we need to know. And so the basic ones are like snapshots, the basic words or phrases like snapshots, repos, or repositories, branches, commits. And then there are some other terms that uh, we use. And then 
the, the main part is merging where if you have merge conflicts, then how do we resolve it? You know, and there's a good YouTube video that explains, you know, how um, Git works. It's like a two and a half minute video that we can probably go through, you guys can go through later. Uh, how to install uh, Git. We can use these commands. If you're using Linux, you can go through uh, app get install git. If you're using Fedora, uh, which is another port of uh, Unix, uh, you can use yum install git or enf install. And there are some links that you can go through. For example, for example, this is a docker. This tells you, you know, if you go to just gitscm.com, it tells you you know, where, what all the documentation of how to install it on whatever operating system you have. You know, if you have Windows, you can go through that as well. And uh, yeah, once you install uh, Git, the first thing we need to do is do the Git config. And how, how do we do a Git config? Uh, Git config is just go through Git config and dash dash global and use a username dot name and which we can give your name and your email so i can give you an example here which is git config you know if i can go for global or for the local Yeah, you can just go through the good global config and, you know, difference between that. The next is like, what is a repo? You know, a repo is a collection of various different versions of different versions of a project. So uh, there might be files that are imported from the repository into a local server. So there are two ways of creating a repo. Either you init it in your local, uh, if you started from uh, your local re a user repo or you, s you clone it. We usually use the cloning method, which is this. We clone a remote repository from a remote server. And then once we clone it, we start modification on it. So like the process of copying the content from an existing uh, Git repository is nothing but cloning. But we can also do that by once you install Git and you know you do a Git in it, it will create a .git folder and that keeps track of all your files or you know of all the directories inside that. Meaning, if you delete that .git folder, then you delete your project's history. You know, then all all the tracking and everything related to your. Uh, a repo will be uh, the config and everything will be lost. Uh, so this is very important. So try not to fidget around with the dot get folder. That's that's how we do. Uh, so what you can do is like the two common scenarios, as you can see, you can create a local Git repo by doing a Git in it, or you can clone the repo from the different uh, repository server, which is GitLab, Bitbucket, GitHub, etc. So that's a nice picture uh pictorial representation of what the repository would look like so a version one would be of say the word the first time you committed three files and then the second time you change the file second you change the file first and you added three more files so that's the second version of your repo and then repository is nothing but snapshots of your different versions of your files so that's what we can talk about next is snapshots Snapshot is a representation of a current state of your track files in the form of a manifest, which can be compared with other manifests to see where the differences are. It only tracks the differences between the manifest from the first moment it was tracked. So if a file is changed since the very first snapshot, all subsequent snapshot will refer to the very first snapshot, if it's not changed, I mean. So if, for example, if the file one 
is changed and file two and three is not changed. So in the second version, it will be just a snapshot of the first two and three, uh, file two and three, but it will be a snapshot of one, you know? So only the one has changed, two and three would be just exactly the same of what it was in version one. You know, so it just creates a, a snapshot. So what it's stored effectively is a chain history of snapshot that lasts to the very first. So what's a branch? A branch is basically a split in timeline, allowing for an alternate historical chain of snapshots from a specific snapshot of the main chain. So I think if you guys have watched Loki, you know, it's, uh, it's you, can, you can see that how the multiverse works. It's uh, branching from the main timeline to a different timeline. So that's that's a good example of how Git basically works. So branches are usually intended for features, you know, such that maybe a point, uh, maybe at a point uh, be merged into main branch. You know, branches are usually intended for features, but in some cases can be used for bug fix you know, on release, which is in the defect life cycle, or if it's in production and you want to do a quick change, you can uh, you can just create a hotfix on it. Depends on uh, project methodology that you use, you know. Uh, if there's no intention to merge, you know, it's just a divergent from the original project in the form of a new one and entirely separate copy of the project. You know, you're just creating your own history, basically. So how to create a branch? So for example, I want to create a branch. They say just create B-R-A-N-C-H. And I want to name this as feature one, right? So I've created a branch called feature one, but now I want to, you know, jump onto that feature one branch. So I want to get checkout feature one. So you have switched on to feature branch one now. So you are on feature one branch. So that means you know now your head is pointing towards feature one. So if you do git reflop, which is kind of you can see that you know you check you you have a head on feature branch one, and that's your reference of law. So that's how you create a branch and that's how you check out to a branch, right? That's what it's merged. And we're going to talk about the merge after, after this. All right. So what's commits? You know, commit capture, uh, captures a snapshot of the project's uh, current, currently staged changes. You know, commit snapshot can be thought as safe versions of project until, unless you go and change it you know basically for example i created this branch right and uh i want say i'm working on this branch i want to create a function called const let's name it as function one right and just an empty function and do a little console.log function one, right? So I named it as function one. Let's save this. So let's, let's save this, right? And once we have saved this, we need to create, like we, we need to make this save. We want to come with this, like, you know, we want to uh, stage it first and then commit it and like make it safe. So what what can you do? With? Like, so what you can do is like git add and then the file name, which is app.js. This means we are staging it. So we have added this, like, okay, we have tracked this file, we have added this, you know, any changes after this on app.js will be untracked. 
and you know these are the track changes already so what you can do is like hit commit this time we're gonna just give a one line comment say add function one right and we come at this so what you can see here it's like okay we have committed this code and uh it's it's ready to push to the uh, remote repo if you want or you can start working on function two and then you can do the same and commit as function two the other one thing i want to get commit messages are very important i have a good documentation or like a good article where you can have a look so there are seven rules of great git commit messages you know is separate subject from body with a blank line you know let's let's have a look at this all right say for example jen or anyone else who's reviewing your code and going through your git messages so it's like okay you have like say 20 git messages and all your git messages are like git commit messages look something like this so do you want your reviewer to go through these messages or messages are something that that look like this definitely something like this right so what it says it's like okay first you give a subject you know and separate the body from the subject keep the subject to 50 characters capitalize the subject line do not end the subject line with the period you know use imperative mood in the subject line wrap the body around in 72 characters and use the body to explain what why and how you did whatever you did on that particular code and i have this little if you're using vs code i have this little template that i have added which says like this is your subject line i try to keep it 50 letters 50 characters I have a multi-line description and if it's connecting to any ticket you know especially if you are connected to jira then you can just write a ticket number here and that will automatically link to your jira ticket if you're using jira in this case probably you're using uh, trello so you can just have a trello ticket number or something and then say for example this is a function one that we added so i i just committed add function add function one and if i want to add add function two then you can add function two you know and then add function three all those commit messages will be different you know they will be all on different commits you don't write you try not to commit like 15 files in under one commit you know it's like okay it should be small commits so then if for example the reviewer just wants two of your commits and it's like okay i just want commit one of you which is i just want function one and function two and not function three so it's easier to cherry pick like git cherry pick the first commit id which is function one the second commit id which is function two and there will be another branch will be like which will be you know something like okay, the branch, the third will be like just get, just commit one and commit to function one and function two you know yeah and not necessary that you know you always have to create this if there are small change you can just use the git commit dash m and you can write that okay just add a function one that is self-explanatory you know but if you're doing like if you're writing a big component and in react you know if you're writing a huge component like what it's what it's doing then you can write it as you know in this subject line so this is exactly what he spoke about you know and let's let's talk about how to resetting the head sometimes you know you do multiple commits right so you did multiple commits so these this is your commit history right so at the moment your head is at this commit which was uh, add function one add function two uh function three you know all of it and then if you want to go to a previous 
come in here. So you can just do a git checkout and then you just go to this particular commit message and it will actually go to that particular head and you know it will just yeah, so yeah you can see that you know it, it went all the way to that particular so whatever the state of your uh, code or app was at that particular commit message it went all the way to that back so if you don't want the other messages you can force push this to your remote remote uh, repo and you the other uh, comments will be gone and your head will be set to this particular head so that's what resetting the head looks like the so git status is just checking like what's the status of your like how what are the track files so if you can see git status you can see like oh you can see head is detached from that you know detached at e3 oh so you can see that okay e3 it's detached at this the actual head is supposed to be <clears throat> yeah so let's Okay. Check out to this particular one. So now it goes back, and you can see your changes again. No? So you, when you went back to your previous one, the the changes were lost, and the state of your application went back all the way to that commit. So whatever the state. So as we were talking about snapshot, so the commit went all the back way back to the snapshot at what had at it was at that particular commit messages but now we went straight back to our head which was pointing towards the last commit message we came here and we retrieved our function again so that is what you can do and then if we if i write another console or for example right and just do a git status you can see that there is one modification you know we you Changes are not staged. That means we haven't added it. That means we haven't done git add and that particular file name, or we haven't added, you know, we haven't clicked on this add anymore. You know, so this can be done. And then uh, once that is done, you can just add git add and that particular app.js. It's actually like we did previously. Yeah, we'll go through that again. So these are some other good, important comment uh, uh, Git commands that you can use. Let's talk about Git merge quickly. So let's Git checkout dev. So let's go to the Git branch. Oh, let's discard these changes first. So if you don't want any changes to be done, you can just discard it, right? So you can just do a git checkout dev, right? So we created branches. So you, you can also see your branches here, right? What's uh, Yeah, it's just spinning. But yeah, you can see that we create a branch, one feature branch, and then you, we create. So if we checked out to dev, the function one was on feature branch, and the dev did not have that feature, function one. So let's create git branch feature two, git checkout feature two. Okay, so now we are on feature two. Let's write another function, const function two is equal to console over function two, right? And let's stage this. Let's, you can, I'll show you this time how to stage it via, um, so you can stage it here, right? After you stage it, you can put the small git messages if you don't want to use the subject line, the whole thing. You can say like add function two, and then this is for committing. So once you commit, you can see that the, the number is gone from here and you have committed the code. You now you did a commit. So now let's go back to git 
check out there. Right. So now we are on there. We don't see any function one or function two anymore here. Let's git merge. Feature one. Right. Okay. So we have merged feature one in in main in main or dev. You can see that function one is added. So our first feature or function one is already in main. Let's add now feature two. So we add a feature two, which is giving us some merge conflicts. So how do we resolve this? Do we want the incoming changes in this case? Yes, we want function one and function two, and we need to resolve this. You know, if we just keep incoming changes, then, you know, if the incoming changes will be just function two. If you keep both the changes, then it will keep both the changes. So these are the options that you can use. So you can just use option two, and then we'll resolve the conflict, which is just what's missing a semicolon. And that's how we have feature one and feature two, and we resolve the conflict and we have our dev is working with both the features. So that's how you do. Hey dear, if you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you.